Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to draw an adorable succulent using clean color real brush markers and colored leads. Your finished succulent will end up looking something like this and we're going to discuss blending techniques for using clean color real brush markers. So the first thing you want to start off with is your watercolor paper and I am using fluid cold press watercolor finish wa I mean watercolor paper and this is their cellulose paper this is not the cotton rag paper and you're wanna, going to want to use a colored lead pencil this is a pilot color eno and I have an introductory video on using these here on the channel that you can check out if you're not familiar with them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring up our reference, which I have on my screen. Unfortunately, you guys can't see it. And we're going to start sketching. And I'm going to do my sketching in time lapse, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So when su sketching succulents, that's quite a mouthful right there, it helps to start with the interior of the plant and work your way outwards, sort of in a spiral pattern. Um, and succulents and roses have sort of a similar shape. They're both very flower-like. I mean, roses are flowers, of course. Um, so it sort of helps if you approach them in the same way. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And when I use my clean color real brush markers, for these sort, of, um, these sort of illustrations, I tend to work with multiple colors at any given time because with these, you want to work wet into wet if you want good blends. And you, it, they just don't blend like Copic markers do. So you need to work kind of quickly for certain colors. So they handle a bit like a hybrid between um, watercolor. I mean, I guess they are technically a type of watercolor marker. They're definitely water-based with a glycerin um, additive in them. So they handle a little smoother. And I like them because they have these individual bristles that don't tear up my paper, which is something that happens when I would try this with something like say Crayola, something a lot less expensive, but also a lot more prone to paper tearing. And I am blending out between two shades of purple and switching over now to a very light pink. And it really helps if you keep your work sort of limited in color and limited in blending because your colors will get muddy if you're not too careful or if you're not careful enough rather. And I like using the colored leads with these because they sort of activate the colored leads. The colored leads become part of the illustration. Whereas if I use just graphite, um, the graphite would sort of be noticeable. You would, uh, it wouldn't blend in as nicely as the color Eno colored leads do. So you can go back in and put another layer on a color if you have allowed it adequate time to dry. So we're gonna just add in a little more over here on that leaf. And I love how you can get these really vibrant colors, but also these smooth blends with very little effort. And these are also much less expensive than say Copic markers. Um, and not that they're comparable, they're very different markers, but uh, in terms of like art markers that you can blend and that you can use for nicer illustrations, these are very similar in that regard. And I'm making these little water, these little water-based marker illustrations, almost said watercolor, I'm trying to think about it like a very loose gestural watercolor because that's the effect I want to give with some soft blends and just some light, delicate transitions that if you guys are familiar with my watercolor work, I'm actually very different with my watercolors. I am not nearly so loose and sketchy. So this is a great chance for me 
to sort of cut loose. And I do these sort of little floral studies, not only to improve my own artistic ability, it's always good to play around with new materials, things you're maybe not super familiar with. But I also do them so I can sell them. So I'm working on these for the Firefly um, Artisan Fair, which is this Saturday. So it's coming up really, 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 really soon here in Nashville. And I think I'm one of maybe two illustrators. I mean, I think the other person is more of a, what would be considered a fine artist. So I might be the only illustrator illustrator, which is exciting for me. Um, and I wanted a few little pieces that could uh, sort of fill that sweet tooth need for something pretty and original uh, without breaking the bank. And I also have sort of, have sort of sold out of a lot of my um, less expensive original pieces between um, Cherry Blossom Festival and MTAC and Free Comic Book Day. I've been a busy girl, so it's nice to be able to restock a little bit. And these are, I wouldn't say they're easy to do because I've done quite a few of them, so I've gotten pretty good at doing them. But, you know, um, since they kind of work best under a fast hand, they're sort of ideal for doing a couple of them before a show. And you guys have also probably, if you haven't, you should check it out. You guys have also seen my watercolor, and my um, mixed media st studies where I do uh, Copic or Blick, um, other types of alcohol markers with watercolor on top. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, you should check out my alcohol marker videos. And for any sort of study, I swatch my colors ahead of time to make sure they work with what is in the actual illustration or they're sort of in line for how I wanted to portray the illustration if I wanted to go in a different direction. And at the end of this video, I can go, sorry, I'm checking colors. Um, I can go over the colors that I used in case you're curious. And I ordered many of these markers. Oh, wow. My camera's color correction is killing this. Um, I ordered many of these markers from Marker Supply, which is a Nashville um, company, but they don't have a public storefront. So unfortunately you can't just pop in there and buy them, but they do have an online shop that's quite good as well. And I do believe they allow you to pick up your order if you're in a super duper rush, but don't hold me on that. I would hate to, I'd hate to give them unnecessary stress. And I also ordered some of these off of Dick Blick, but I like Marker Supply because you can order them open stock. And I believe they were having a sale. These might actually be going out of, um, I think uh, Kuratake is changing over their real brush line and combining it with their ABT line. So these will, the, the cool brush tip thing will still be available. It is just called something different. I apologize that I am word salading all over the place tonight. I'm trying to give you guys information and also trying to do a good job here because I do need to be able to sell these tomorrow if at all, or Saturday if at all possible. And I know some of you um, are probably having a little bit of a hard time because they're like, she only spent 10 minutes on that. Why would she, you know, how dare she sell it? But you have to keep in mind that I have been doing 
marker stuff. Um, gee whiz, for 12 years now. Um, and I've been doing watercolor as like my main gig for a little five, six years now. And I've been doing art supply stuff, reviews, tests, etc., for over eight years. So I, the reason I can be fast is because I have all this experience under my belt. So if it takes you longer to do yours, or if it doesn't turn out quite the way you envisioned it, please be patient with yourself and give yourself time to actually learn how to do this. So I'm actually going to use, I think, a light green to imply shadows and that way it'll sort of um, hopefully pop the contrast a bit. All right, and I actually have I might ruin this, but I have sort of opaque Kurtaki brush writer. And um, I wanted to, if I can get it really running, I want, yeah, there we go. I wanted to mm, do some of the, this might not be a good idea, but it's such a hot pink. I thought it might be actually really perfect for getting some of the color I want out of this. So this is not a clean color real brush, but it is a Kurataki product. I think it will help me out actually. Get some of those hot pinks that I wasn't quite able to get because I don't have quite that color. I can also layer some of these colors, which is cool. I also want to go in with this purple and darken that up a little bit. All right, I think, unfortunately, you guys, hopefully we can color correct this, but it looks really good in person and it looks kind of muted on the camera. Okay, so the colors that I use, the base purple is English Lavender and that is 803. The shade color I used for that was Violet 080. The light pink I used was Sugared Almond Pink in 200. Pink in 025. A little bit of purple in 200. Green shadow in 049. And then a touch of candy pink with the Brush Rider 2, also by Kuratake. And I used a purple color Eno on fluid watercolor paper. And you guys can find links to all of the materials in the description below. I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today, for watching this video. Um, and hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I was able to teach you something new. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please do check out my other alcohol and water-based marker tutorials here on this channel. If you guys have any special requests, you should definitely let me know. And if you want to make sure your special request gets followed, you should join my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. For loads more information about markers from water-based to alcohol, check out my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. There are two hub pages which will be of great interest of you, my alcohol markers and my water-based marker hub pages. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope we get to hang out again really soon and I hope you enjoyed. Bye guys.